It's the Black Real Estate Dialogue. Tune in. Tune in. Tune in. Tune in. Tune in. Tune in. What was it like on that first one? Because, you know, previously, you're pretty much buying things that are already running, properties that are already rented out and so forth. Um, what was it like transitioning and um, getting into the birth strategy and, you know, contractors and just a lot more stuff, a lot more variables. Talk, talk to us about what that was like. Man, listen, um, I'm going to walk you through the birth process and the steps, right? So the first one is the buy. All right. So I'm already in St. Louis. How do I buy a property off, um, you know, that needs work at the price that I need it? So most people look at a property and try to find the ARV Say the Airbnb is 100, they want to buy a property for 50, 60,000. Put, you know, there has to be enough room in there for it to make sense. So it's like, all right, well, where do I find the properties at? So I started looking at on Zillow and um, Redfin and all those websites. Start looking at properties. And then you, if you find a property, like, oh, you know, these numbers work, let me look, look at it. Not realizing there's a realtor that's involved and they're strategically pricing it low to start a bidding war. That doesn't work for that doesn't work for me because I'm not living in the property. Someone who lives in a property obviously can offer more than I want to offer because I have certain criteria and numbers I need to hit. It's like, damn, that doesn't work. Okay, let me find a wholesaler. So I um, actually found a wholesaler and started doing a mastermind group um, with uh, Sam out of uh, St. Louis. Sam does a bunch of stuff on, on the internet, but found a wholesaler with him. This is, mind you, this is after several months of trying to do this on my own. I, I would find a property, say I did find a property prior to, to finding a wholesaler, then I would have to send out a contract to go see that property, right? Because I'm not there. I need them to go buy the property and give me the numbers. Now here's, here's one of the, uh, the other hardest parts of being a distant, um, investor trying to burn. What is if a if a property hits the market, you have other people seeing that same property, and if you have a contractor, that contractor may go today. They may go two or three days. They may go in four days, and then if they go, you may never hear from them. They may send you a quote, and it might take a week to get that quote. The house is gone. Boom. All right. But that contractor, you took up a lot of his or her time. That contractor may or may not even return your calls after that. And you're a long distance, distant investor. Like, damn, I just lost the contractor. So I went to one contractor. Same thing happened. He went by another house that I saw. A new contractor sent me the numbers um, and then just disappeared. So it's like, this is taking a lot of time and effort because there's so many pieces. I play chess. Do you play chess? There's so uh, many. Uh, not, not since I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many moving pieces on this board that ha have different strategies and different movements. And so finally got with a wholesaler. The great thing about a wholesaler is a wholesaler wants to move that property as quickly as possible. And they understand what the investor's end point end game is and so they're more willing they're they're more so what you're looking for and as far as properties to do the birth strategy so that was one on the b the first b which is buy got with a wholesaler wholesaler brought me the property great um second step in that birth strategy is to rehab like i said finding these contractors and finding one that you can trust remember i'm long distance so I don't know any of these contractors. I've never seen them, had a conversation with them. And so what I decided to do with this contractor, the contractor company is Epic with a K. I love, I love them. Um, I work with Patrick and Ashley. They're, they're awesome. But what I did with this is I realized, all right, I can't just send the contractor out to every property that I think is interesting because it's not cost effective for them. After a few of these, it's kind of like, I'm just, you're not going to get, continue to send me all around town. So I had to tighten my game up as far as what I'm looking at. So the wholesaler brought me this property. They can run the ARV. That was another hiccup. This is a long winded conversation, by the way. But that's another hiccup that they don't tell you is say you find a property 
a wholesaler brings you a property, how do you know what the AR, the active repair value is, the ARV? You're not a realtor. You don't have, especially in that state or that city, you're not a realtor there. So how are you going to run comps for that property in order to see what the ARV is going to be? So it's another hiccup. So now I'm just like, damn, wait, how am I going to run comps? So on this one, luckily, the wholesaler um, was able to run comps. And most wholesalers can run comps because they have, you know, connections with realtors or they're also, they have their real estate license. Um, but I, I signed up with Batch Leads. I don't know if you ever have heard of Batch Leads. Batch Leads allows me to run comps everywhere across the nation. So I don't have to rely on a real estate and what information they're providing. Um, but with that first property, it was a duplex. Um, they ran the comps. I ran the comps. Comps came out at 125, bought it for, for 75. It's like, all right, great. Find this contractor. So the rehab, he went and looked at the property. Mind you, the wholesaler was like, oh, quick, some, some quick touch-ups, you're good. Contractor went to the property, said, no, this needs a new roof. This is done in a new kitchen, new bathroom. Great. Um, got it under contract. Um, the contractor started. Now here's, here's, this is the biggest, this is the scariest moment of the process for me and any of my real estate investing part. Mm -hmm. So the contractor wanted 50% down initially. I was like, damn. I know, I don't know you, <laughs> right? You know, like to this day, I've never seen my contractor and I kind of want to keep it that way until I reach like my hundred unit goal. Um, I was like, damn, like, I don't know this person, right? I don't know this company. What if they just take my money and run? Um, so we work things out. This is how we're going to pay on tier, tier levels, um, which I highly recommend you accomplish this. I'll give you this. You do the roof. I'll give you this. You finish the kitchen. I'll give you this. And so it worked out for both of us. Um, and so that was the rehab, the rehab aspect. Um, so mind you, say it's June 1st. I bought the property on June 1st because I'm paying cash. There was no delay in the closing. I closed within like two, two or three weeks, right? So now we're like on June 20th, just for example. <laughs> Um, paid the contractor, contractor came in, busted out the roof in the kitchen in the bathroom in a week. Um, so we're looking at like July 10th, for example. So all in, we're looking at six weeks, boom. So by rehab, there was already a, a, a tenant in the, in the first floor. I talked to our property manager, let's put a tenant in there. Now you have to go to the rehab process. Before doing this, I contacted several banks. Hey, this is what I'm doing. Will you refi at 80%? Some of them will do 75%. Some will do 80%. Here's the kicker. Most of the banks has, have a uh, six-month seasoning period. So basically, if I bought that property on January 1st, no matter what happens, they're not going to refi until June because they need to see that I've hold, held that property for six months and it's making money. First State Bank of St. Charles didn't have, they don't have that rule for me. So those smaller banks, are, they'll work with you. And they said, listen, as soon as you're done, you're good. You can refi as soon as you want. I was like, awesome. So again, six weeks in, I'm done. I go to them, they send an appraiser out, an appraisers. I have someone meet the appraiser and I put together this package so it would appraise at what I wanted to appraise. So I included comps. I included what I did to the property. So all the rehab costs, I included into this little package and gave it to the appraiser. I'm not sure how much the appraiser looked at it, but I wanted to make sure the appraiser knew, you just don't look at the property. Here's all the details of the property. Here's the comps and here's what it should um, appraise at. Appraisal came back at 125. Like I said, within six weeks, it was all done. Wow. Hi everyone, Sam here from Black Real Estate Dialogue. Make sure to hit that notification bell and that subscribe button and to visit us at blackrealestatedialogue.com.